Hello my dear friends. Today, we will continue learning about the connectivity features of the powerful ESP32 Development Board, or the ESP32 Dev Kit. We will use a pair of red and green LEDs as information output. We will also use a potentiometer as an information input. From our Arduino development environment, we will learn how to configure our ESP board as a Bluetooth wireless device. On our Android phone, we will learn how to configure a simple Bluetooth application to wirelessly control the status of the LEDs using buttons. And also using our phone's Google Voice services. Turn on red. Turn off red. Turn on green. Turn off green. Additionally, we will obtain the voltage information associated with our potentiometer and display it in real time on our phone's application. Welcome! If this is the first time you are going to program a board based on the ESP32 chip, I recommend you watch this video by clicking on the top of the screen, where you will learn how to install the resources of this board in the Arduino development environment, to develop and test your first program. This is the wiring diagram we will use, using the two LEDs, red and green, and using a 10 kilo ohm linear potentiometer. I'll leave the diagram in the video description in case you need it. Once we mount the diagram on a breadboard, or in the place of your preference. We will use a USB cable, with a Type-C connector on one end, and a Type-A connector on the other end. We will connect the Type-A end to the USB port of our computer and the type C end to the ESP32 board. On our computer, we open the Arduino development environment, the Arduino IDE. In the software, go to Tools, Board, and within ESP32 boards, select the ESP32 dev module. Likewise, in Tools, Port, we select the port where our ESP board is connected. Then we go to File, Examples, and enter the tab of Bluetooth Serial Examples for the ESP32, which contains classic Bluetooth examples. So, in this classic Bluetooth tab, we open the Serial to Serial BT example. This will be the example from which we will develop the functions for wireless Bluetooth control of our ESP32 board. And in which we will edit the name of our preference, which will give our ESP32 board its Bluetooth network name. If we go down to the backbone of the code, that is, the void loop cyclic method, we have two conditional if structures, representing a serial bridge on the ESP32 board. That is, the data arriving through the wired serial interface, which usually comes from our computer, is sent through the Bluetooth or serial BT wireless interface. The data arriving wirelessly to the Bluetooth interface is sent through the wired serial interface to our computer. To understand this better, let's upload this program to the ESP32 board and wait for it to complete the upload. Once the program is loaded on the board, let's go to our Android phone. And here, we enter the Bluetooth settings. We select Sync a new device to start discovering new devices. And once the name we gave our device in the Arduino code appears, we select it. And then we link it. Then we enter the Play Store. And we search for, Arduino Bluetooth Controller. We select the app with the robot icon, and install it. When we open the application, it asks us to select the device with which we want to connect, we select our ESP32 device. Once we are connected to it, we open the Bluetooth terminal panel. On our computer, we open the serial monitor of our Arduino software, making sure the speed is set to 115,200 baud. And on the phone I will type, hello from the cell phone. If we look at the serial monitor on our computer, we can see the message sent from the phone. Just as if we type a message on the serial monitor, hello from the computer, and press enter, we can see the message on our phone, understanding that the ESP32 module is configured as a bridge or gateway, between a wired serial interface and a Bluetooth wireless serial interface. This is enough to intuit what it is, what we should execute in the code, to exercise control over the board's LEDs, and to monitor the potentiometer voltage. So at the start of our application, we select the button panel. 
Then we enter the configuration icon. And at the bottom of the list, we enter the button command configuration. To button named A, I will assign the command capital A. To button B, I will assign the command capital B. To button C, I will assign the command capital C. To button D, I will assign the command capital D. These are the commands that will be sent wirelessly via Bluetooth when each button is pressed. If we look at the serial monitor on our computer right now and press each button on the phone, we can see the commands received according to our configuration. It's becoming clearer then that in our Arduino code, we must interpret these commands and assign a function to each one, in this case, to operate the LEDs. So in the Arduino code, we identify a first control structure where we receive data from the wired serial interface. And a second control structure where we receive data from the Bluetooth wireless interface. In this second structure, I'm going to delete what's inside. And I'm going to create a new character variable named C, where I'll store the character reading that arrives through this Bluetooth serial interface. If I wish, I can rewrite this incoming character through the wired serial interface to view it on the computer. Just for a change, instead of using if structures to validate conditions, I'll use a switch case structure. In the condition of this structure, I'll switch the value of variable C. And in the cases of the structure, I will code. If variable C has a value of A, the single quotes next to the letter indicate that it is a character and not a numeric value being evaluated, I will turn on the red LED with a high value on pin 26. If variable C has a value of B, I will turn off the red LED with a low value on pin 26. If variable C has a value of C, I will turn on the green LED with a high value on pin 25. If variable C has a value of D, I will turn off the green LED with a low value on pin 25. At the top of the code, inside the void setup method, I will set pins 25 and 26 as digital outputs and upload this code to the ESP32 board. When the upload is complete, I go to my cell phone and reconnect the app to the ESP32. I re-enter the button panel, and I now have wireless control of both LEDs from this panel. To control these same LEDs with voice commands, go to the start of our application, and in the settings icon, scroll down, and enter the voice command settings. Entering the first voice command, I will set, turn on red, and entering the data to send, that is, the data that the application will send via Bluetooth once it recognizes this voice command, I will enter the capital letter E. In the second voice command, I'll set, turn off red, or set the command of your choice, and in the data to send, I'll use the capital letter F. In the third voice command, I'll set, turn on green, and in the data to send, I'll use the capital letter G. In the fourth voice command, I'll set, turn off green, and in the data to send, I'll use the capital letter H. Now, on our computer, and knowing which commands or letters our app sends to the ESP32 board when receiving voice commands. We add the cases and actions for these new commands to our code, that is, the E, F, G, and H commands. We upload the code to the board again, and once loaded, we reconnect our ESP32 Bluetooth module to our application. We enter the voice control panel. And that's it. Turn on red. Turn off red. Turn on green. Turn off green. Now, we want to display on our cell phone, the voltage associated with the movement of the potentiometer. To do this, in the code, We'll read the digital value from pin 34 where the potentiometer is located and store it in a variable I'll call digital value. Then we'll scale this digital value and store it in a variable I'll call voltage, which will have a numerical range from 0 to 4095, depending on the position of the potentiometer, in a new range of 0.0, .0 to 3.3, representing the numerical range of the actual voltage. And finally, we'll transmit it through the serial BT interface, that is, wirelessly via Bluetooth. We upload this final program to the ESP32 board, code that I share in the description of this video. Once loaded, go to our application and reconnect our ESP32 Bluetooth module. We enter the configuration and scroll down to the metric section. 
Here we enter the units section and enter the units of the variable we want to illustrate. In this case, volts. If the average box is checked, uncheck it to illustrate the instantaneous voltage value. Return to the beginning of our application and enter the metrics panel, and that's it. Dear friends, I hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful. Special greetings from Electronic Spot, and see you in the next video.